joining us right now with the very latest. Good morning to you, Chairman. First, you with you, let's talk about what's happening today in the committee with the Twitter files. Yeah. Tell us about the report the panel released in regards to the, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, demanding Elon Musk release names of journalists. Yeah, a federal government agency is, t is talking to and demanding from a private company all kinds of information. And some of the things they demanded were, who are the journalists you are talking to? And they named four journalists personally, four of the people who are involved in giving us the information that's now been you know, commonly referred to as the Twitter files. I think there's several different installments in the Twitter files thus far from several journalists. So personally naming journalists there, I mean, if that's not the weaponization of government against the First Amendment freedom of press rights that we enjoy in this country, I don't know what is. And two of those four individuals named by the FTC uh, are going to be testifying here later this morning, Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger. So we look forward to that hearing and what they have to say now that they are officially targets, frankly, of the federal government. Why do you think the FTC is doing this, Chairman? Well, they're using the guise of there's been a consent decree that, that, that Twitter's been functioning under now for like 11 years uh, dealing with what happened in the old Twitter where, they were, where there was uh, some private information of, of users that uh, Twitter was using in an inappropriate way. They're not doing that now, but there's a consent decree there. So as soon as Elon Musk buys the, uh, purchases the company, all the left starts pressuring Lena Khan, the chairman of the FTC, who, oh, by the way, Jen, guess where she used to work? She worked for House Democrats on the Judiciary Committee. So Lena Khan then starts writing letters, uh, uh, 12 different letters sent to Elon Musk in the time from uh, when he purchases the company over the next three months. So um, demanding all kinds of things. They want to know every communication Elon Musk has ever had. Who's, who have you talked to? Who have you communicated with? Who's communicated with you? And anytime his name was mentioned in any communication at Twitter, they want access to all that information. And you said the FBI also <laughs> colluded with big tech to suppress information. So do you plan to subpoena any more agents and explain how you're going to use the, the power of the purse, the appropriations process in limiting FBI funding? Well, the way oversight works is we have a constitutional duty to, to provide oversight and do investigations of, of federal agencies. You don't do it just to, just to do it. You do it to get the facts, put the facts on the table, and then we're a legislative body. You propose legislation, and of course, we appropriate funds. So we're going to look for, get all the facts on the table, let make sure the American people knows exactly what's been happening here, and then we'll look to propose legislation to get that passed. And we'll also look in the appropriations process if we need to limit how funds are spent, if we need to reduce funds, if we need to do certain things in the appropriation process, we're going to focus on that too because that's that's our job. We know that big government and big tech colluded to keep information from the American people. The Twitter files have been showing that, uh, uh, I think, very clearly. Uh, and we're going to talk about that today in, uh, in our hearing. On Wednesday, there was a hearing on the origins of COVID. Robert Redfield, the former CDC director, testified that he always believed it was a lab leak based on the virus's structure and past work. So was there a cover-up, and why isn't the U.S. holding China accountable? I think there was a cover-up by the uh, leaders here in our country, I think by Dr. Fauci. Uh, and I think the reason he was so intent on not letting the lab leak theory even be debated, let alone it looks like that's exactly what happened, but he was so, so focused on downplaying that because he had approved our tax dollars going to a lab in China, a lab that was not up to code, that was doing gain-of-function research. And the outbreak happens in that very city, Wuhan, in, Wuhan China, Wuhan Institute of Virology. And I think he was covering his backside because right from the get-go, Dan, he, he gets an email from one of these virologists he's been handing our tax dollars out to over the years, Dr. Christian Anderson. And that email says, January 31st, 2020, 10.32 p.m., that email says, virus looks engineered, virus not consistent with evolutionary theory. The next day, February 1st, 2020, he gets another email from Dr. Gary. Dr. Gary says, I don't know how this happens in nature, but it would be easy to do in a lab. Dr. Fauci says, wow, we can't have that message getting out there. So he organizes a conference call, gets those two virologists on the call, a bunch of others. They get their story straight. And three days later, Dr. Gary and Dr. Anderson, who said this thing had to come from a lab. I don't know how it could happen in nature. They change their story 180 degrees and say, now you're crazy if you think it came from a lab. And, of course, three months later, they get rewarded with a $9 million grant given to wow. those two guys to continue their research. So I, I, this was, I, I think, clearly, and Dr. Redfield, by the way, was kept out of all this initially, even though he was on the task force that was formed two days before on January 29th 
2020, Dr. Redfield, head of CDC, was kept out of it because he was open to either hypothesis. No, 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 they couldn't have that. They could only have one story because that's, they couldn't have the fact getting out that they had funded this research in China and they were doing gain of function research in that lab. And we're just now seeing some of the thousands of hours of video from inside the Capitol during January 6th. Were some protesters escorted by police and why wasn't it released before now? What's been your biggest takeaway with the new footage? Well, it wasn't released before now because the January 6th committee was totally political. I mean, we caught them in all kinds of lies, and we could, we didn't have any Republicans on the committee that could actually cross-examine witnesses and see the evidence, and we still caught them lying. They lied about me a couple times, and we caught them. I mean, it's clear as, clear as day we caught them. So uh, it's great that Speaker McCarthy has allowed um, Tucker Carlson and Fox News to have this information and begin to show the, the, the whole thing. I always say transparency is a good thing. So um, I'm glad they're, they're, uh, it's out there and that Speaker McCarthy made the decision to allow the American people to see what was going on inside their capital that Nancy Pelosi kept them out of for a year and a half. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's, it's good that that, that information is out there and they can take a look at it. You also, also issued subpoenas to former executives with the National School Boards Association. What have you learned in regards to the federal investigation into parents who spoke up at school board meetings? What we've learned from the documents we've gotten back in, 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 our, in our investigation, talking with people, is that this was to totally political. I think the Democrats did it. I think the Justice Department did it because they were trying to help Terry McAuliffe win the Virginia gubernatorial race. It backfired on them. They got a lot of mom and dads mad when, the, when parents found out that they were being targeted by the federal government. Look, if you, if you got someone who's showing up at a school board meeting and doing things they're not supposed to do, that, that's not appropriate. It should be handled, but it should be handled at the local level with local law enforcement, for goodness sake. You don't need a federal federal government getting involved. And um, I think that's what, what, what we've seen. And of course, it, it, as I said, I think this actually turned to be the issue that helped Glenn Youngkin win the governor's race, even though Democrats felt it was going to help uh, Terry McAuliffe in that uh, in that election. Just didn't work out because moms and dads have a way of saying when, when Terry McAuliffe said, we think schools are smarter than parents and parents shouldn't be involved in their kids' education, there were a bunch of moms and dads who said, I don't think so. And uh, they showed up in a big way. So it, it, it actually backfired on them. But we're going to make sure we talk to these folks and get, get all the uh, all the information we can. Um, and if, if there's something, as I said before, that needs to happen legislatively, we're going to examine that as well. House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan, thanks for joining us this morning. Are you awake yet? Oh, my goodness.